So, you have Pixels now, of course, but this is your first big blockbuster opportunity to come out of Game of Thrones. Uh, how did it feel to get the call from Brian Singer? Uh, incredible. <laughs> yeah, my manager said, uh, he called me, said, uh, Brian Singer wants to call you, is that okay? <laughs> yes, it's fine. <laughs> it's given my cell phone number. Um, no, and we had a great talk, and obviously uh, the script was still being worked out, um, but he just described, I mean, I obviously had seen the f previous films um, and loved every single one of them, um, but he just described the character and the story, and uh, it was a no-brainer. I, I fit it into my schedule. <laughs> well, what's more work? King's Landing hair and makeup or 70s hair and makeup? Oh, wow. They come, they come pretty close. <laughs> Uh, one requires a lot more hairspray, and the other one requires a lot more uh, scar material. So <laughs> they go neck and neck. Yeah, um, but no, it's 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 so much fun to be lucky enough to be a part of two things of like equal epic proportions. You know, but again, I'm just a small piece in a large puzzle, and and the reason why these uh, two projects are are so great is the storytelling and the and the the scripts, mm -hmm. great scripts. Compli complicated, but not out of one's reach. Well, speaking of complicated, actors always say when they play a villain, they don't see the villain as evil. How do you see Bolivar Trask? No, evil is just too broad, and, mm -hmm. and no one uh, considers themselves evil. I think what I think it just it's very skewed perspective on things, um, and you sort of can't judge a character really when you're playing it. Obviously, this character is doing something in no way he, that he should be doing <laughs> because it, anything like this uh, throughout history um, comes at a great cost mm -hmm. of lives lost. Um, but he sees it scientifically, clinically and scientifically that the evolution of man is, is following this uh, course and um, if it continues this way, we will, like the and Neanderthals by the Cro-Magnons, we will be sort of eventually uh, we will be petered out, um, and uh, he wants to prevent that. And he sees an opportunity at this time, this in the early 70s when we were in Vietnam, um, as a way to bring peace to the world with a common enemy. Mm. Well, you know... Although it's very dark that these X-Men come in a variety of different, you know, some are, you have Magneto, and then you have, right. like, little children, innocent children, mm -hmm. and he wants to, much like... Um, a gentleman named uh, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> yes. You know, it doesn't matter. No, you just no, have to I... sort of eradicate everyone and start clean, and that's 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 horrific. Well, Adolf Hitler is obviously a very real-world villain, and you're part mm -hmm. of the very real-world aspect of this story. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important for the X-Men movies to stay grounded? Why not just go full fantasy? Because um, there's so many. It's just there's such a, there's such a parallel to our world. Um, and I think it's much more relatable when you do that. Uh, it, it makes it so much more complicated as well. I mean, there's stuff in here about JFK, and <laughs> it's just, I mean, we know we're watching a fantasy film, a, a, a comic book film, but it's, it's a lot more fun to just sort of fantasize about that, mm -hmm. like these little notions throughout history that have involved the X-Men. It's just, it's just fun. Um, and adds, it's, it's a little wink, you know, it's nice. <laughs> well, the last thing I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. was that uh, you've been quite successful in getting people to see past how you look to who you are. And that's one of the reasons that people like the X-Men so much. That's mm -hmm. why the people really gravitate to these characters. Right. So what would you say to those people, to the audience? Um, what advice would you give to someone like Mystique, say? To someone, to advice to give to one of the X-Men characters? Well, it's just like Mystique who's struggling with, you know, that same struggle. Oh, right. You well, know. you know, I mean, I think that comes with getting older and having a sense of humor about oneself. And I'm not sure Mystique has a sense of humor <laughs> no. um, about herself. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, I think it's, I mean, you look at these characters and the ones that are more comfortable in their own skin are the ones that are... are uh, um, more stable and, and peace-loving, um, and the, and you know I was angry when I was younger, and that's that's nothing nothing really ever good comes out of that. So I think it's just getting older <laughs> helps.